Throughout the code you write, you'll be using classes. Often those classes will come from the .NET Framework base class library, and often they'll be classes that you wrote yourself. Classes contain properties, and they contain methods. Properties provide access to information, for example, the name, the location, or the size of a file, or company name, address, or country. Methods perform actions. This could be create, move, or delete a file. It could be save customer information, or place an order. And when you design your classes, you'll need to figure out what properties to include and what methods to include. So for example, if you're creating a customer class, what customer information becomes part of that class? And then what actions can a user of that customer class perform? Properties contain information, and a public property on a class can be used by a user of that class. Behind the scenes, there's a private field in the class that contains the actual value of the property. And if a user makes a change to a property in code, the calling code passes that new information to the procedure, and then code in the property setter updates that private field. If calling code wants to query the value of a property, then the property getter passes the value of the private field back to the calling code. So the private field does the actual work of storing the value of the property, and then the property setter is code that enables calling code to make changes, and the property getter is code that enables calling code to query the value of the property. So creating a property that can be written to and read from is pretty straightforward. But there are additional things you can do in properties, because remember, you can have any code you want in the property setter and any code you want in the property getter. For example, you can have code in a property getter that determines the value for a property. Maybe it's not just as simple as reading a value. Maybe you want to calculate the value. So in the code here, the location property returns the city and the region and the postal code added together as a single string. City, region, and postal code in this example are properties on this class, but the location property concatenates them into a combined format. Or perhaps you want to validate values. You can write code in a property setter to validate or adjust the value for a property. So you don't just rely on the calling code to set the value of the property. You have intermediary code to validate or make changes. In the example here, we want to validate that the customer ID is five characters long. So the getter at top just returns the value of the customer ID private field, but in the setter, this code receives a value and uses the length property to see how many characters were passed in. If it's not five, then this code throws an exception and returns a message that the customer ID must be five characters long. If the customer ID passed in is five characters long, then this code converts that to uppercase and stores that in the private field for customer ID. You can also pass arguments to properties. So rather than create multiple properties to handle a variety of cases, you can pass arguments to properties and have a single property handle the various cases. So in this example, we have a property called customer since that returns a string. And we can pass in a date interval, day, month, year, etc. And we can determine how to express the answer to the question, how long has this person been a customer? We can pass a date interval of day to this property and return, for example, this person's been a customer since Friday. Or we could pass year to this property and return that this person's been a customer since 1999. Let's go see a demo. We'll see a customer class and we'll look at the code that's used to implement the properties. I'm in the Properties and Methods sample application. Let's take a look at writing to and reading a property. So in this first example, we're going to create a new instance of the customer class. 
the customer class is contained in this file, customer.vb. Let's take a quick look at that. Customer has properties for customer ID, customer name, city, region, postal code, and country. There's a default country of USA. The customer class also has a property for annual sales, a property for location, a couple different overloaded versions of the customer since property, and a property for total sales. And then there's a number of methods. Let's go back to main module and we'll create an instance of the customer class. And then we'll set a property. So we're going to set the customer name property of the sum customer class to AppDev. So let's step into this code. And when the calling code sets the value of this property, it passes a value to the property setter. So the value is AppDev. And then the code in the setter stores that value to the customer name backing field, in this case, underscore customer name. That private field belongs to the customer class, and this now stores the value of that property. So now when we step out of this, we can then reference the value of that property. Now when we ask what is the value of the customer name property, Let's step into this. The property getter looks up the value that's stored in this private field and returns that. And therefore, we see that the customer's name is AppDev. So that's the basics of how properties work. But you can do much more than just store a value to a private field and retrieve a value from a private field. Let's see what happens when determining the value of a property involves more than just looking up the value in a field. So we'll run the calculated property value example here. And now we're going to create an instance of the customer class. We're going to set the name, the city, the region, and the postal code for that customer. Then we're going to display the customer name. Well, that's straightforward. We know it's Application Developers Training Company. Now we want to display the location property. Let's step into that. And the location property is actually a combination of the city, the region, and the postal code. When we set the city property, the city was set to Eden Prairie. When we set the region property, that field was set to MN. And when we set the postal code property, that field was set to 55344. So this code is now going to return as one string the city, a space, the region, a space, and the postal code. And that's displayed here. The location is city, region, postal code. Now we want to display the country. When we created the instance of the customer class, we didn't specify country. So let's see what happens when we run this code. So the getter returns the value of underscore country, which is equal to USA. Now, why is that equal to USA? We didn't set it. That's because there is the concept of a default property. And the default country is equal to USA. Okay, let's step out of here and display that the country is the USA. Let's create another instance of the customer class. But this time, let's see how that default property is set. So let's come into customer. And let's look at the backing field, the private backing field for countries declared as a string. And it's also declared equal to this field here, underscore default country. And the default country was set equal to USA. So if we create an instance of the customer class and don't specify a country, it's automatically going to default to USA.
So if we step over this and create the instance of the customer, let's go into the immediate window, one of the many windows here at the bottom that we can use to evaluate what's going on in our code. And we can type sum customer dot country and that returns USA. Okay. Let's give this customer a name and then we can display that name. It's Big Industries and we want to know the annual sales for this customer. Typically the annual sales would be stored in a database but we're not using databases here so let's see the code we use to determine the annual sales. Let's step into this and it turns out that the annual sales are completely random in this example. So in the property getter, we're going to create a new instance of the random class from the .NET framework and generate a random number and return that as the annual sales for this customer, a completely random number. Now, ordinarily, the code in the annual sales property would look up this information in a database, but for our purposes here, returning a random number works well. Let's continue on and see how we can validate property values. So I'll call the invalid property value example. So again, we're going to create a new instance of the customer class. The customer ID is big, the name is Big Industries, they're in Redmond, Washington, and the country is unknown. So now we're going to step into this. The value being sent in is unknown and the code in the property setter checks to see if the country is set to either USA, Canada, or Mexico. At the moment we're only dealing with countries in North America. We'll expand eventually but for the moment we're just dealing in North America. So we're going to check if the value is either USA or Canada or Mexico. So we could say if value equals USA or value equals Canada or value equals Mexico, but a shorter way to do this is to create a string USA, Canada, Mexico and then ask does that contain whatever was passed in as the value. In this case the answer is no, so this code is going to throw an exception. Returning a message, country must be USA, Canada, or Mexico. And at this point execution stops. In a real live application, we'd have some code in here to trap for that message, but since we don't, the code exits. If we change this to a valid value and run, now we'll create the instance of the customer class in Redmond, the country is USA, let's step into this. That was postal code. Let's step into setting the country property. And now USA, Canada, Mexico does contain USA and therefore it's a valid property and it's set and the code continues. And we can display the ID, the name, the location, and the country. And there we are. Finally, we want to see how we can expand the capabilities of properties by being able to pass arguments to them. I'll run the passing arguments to properties example. And here, we're going to create a new customer, give it a customer name of big. Now we want to know how long the customer has been a customer, but there are various components to that. Maybe all we want to know is what year the customer became a customer. Or maybe we want to know the month. We have a rule that says, in your anniversary month, you get a 5% discount. Or maybe it's just on the anniversary day, anniversary being defined as when you became a customer. So let's retrieve the customer since property and then we can break it down into these various components. Let's step into the following code and we'll see that the customer since property returns a date of June 1st, 2002. Now of course in a real application we'd look up the date but for our purposes here, returning a fixed date works just fine. So we know the customer has been a customer since June 1st, 2002. 
and we want to break that down into the various pieces. Because customer since is a date variable, we can use the year property to display that the customer has been a customer since 2002. So far so good. But now we want to know what month and what year they became a customer. And here we're going to have to do some calculations. We can't get the month directly out of customer since, so we're going to have to write some code to figure it out. First we're going to create this variable month year string as a string equal to customer since displayed in the month year format. So now we have the month spelled out. So when I said we couldn't get the month out, we can actually get the 6 out, June expressed as a number, but we want it expressed as a string. So now we have a string that's June 01, and then we're going to remove everything in that string after the space, and what's left should be the month. The anniversary month is June. And then finally, we can use the day property to determine what day of the month this customer became a customer. So we can write this code, but after doing this a couple times, we're going to wonder why do we have to write this code in the calling code? Why can't we have the property do this math for us? And why can't we tell the property, I want to know how long the customer has been a customer based on year, or based on month, or based on day. So rather than just get the date back and have to do the manipulations in code from the calling code, we'd like the property to be smart enough to do this. So let's see how we did that. Again, the customer since property just returns a particular date. But now notice in these next three examples, that there's a version of the customer since property that takes a parameter. So let's step into this version of customer since, and we're going to pass in date interval dot year. So notice that we have an overloaded version of the property. There's two versions, the one we looked at before that takes no parameters, and the version that does take a parameter. And this version takes as a date interval, a unit of time, which is currently year. Okay, next, we're going to define the start date as that anniversary date, June 1st, 2002. And then if the unit of time passed in is day, then we're going to return the day as a string. Otherwise, if the unit of time passed in is a month, then we're going to do the same manipulation we just did in the calling code, but we're going to do that inside the property and return the month as a string. Finally, since in this instance we passed in the year, we're going to return the year of the date based as a string. So now, without having to do any of those manipulations in the calling code, we can pass a date interval of a year, a date interval as a month, a date interval as a day to the customer since property, and have the property do all the work for us. So the benefit of being able to pass parameters to the properties is we can have one property perform multiple tasks based on the parameter we pass in and not have to write the code ourselves every time in the calling code. We just put it in the property and then call the property multiple times with different parameters. So you've seen in this demo several examples of how you can write whatever code you need to in your properties to calculate values, to validate or modify values, and also to parameterize your properties so they perform multiple tasks.